This is a tool that will help us visualize exactly what the computer is doing, the line of code that it's on, the memory it's storing, and what it's outputting. So let's begin. The computer will start at the very beginning in the header of the outer for loop. The first thing it does is initialize the variable i to 1. We can see here that it says in memory i is now equal to 1. The next thing it does is check that i is less than or equal to 10. Since 1 is less than 10, that's true, and now the computer knows it can enter this for loop body here. So let's go next. Inside the for loop, it sees another for loop. This one has a very similar header, but this time it's going to set a different variable, j. So it sets j equal to 1, and we can see that the memory is updated, and it checks to make sure that j is less than or equal to 10, which it is, and that means it can continue into the body of this inner for loop. It goes into the body and sees this console.log statement. Now here I'm using console.log instead of print line because it's a slightly different environment, but it does the same thing. So when it executes that, it will multiply i times j. We can see i is 1 and j is 1, so we're going to get very exciting 1. Beautiful. All right, now it goes back to this inner for loop because it's not done with it yet. The first thing it needs to do is execute this increment part because that always happens at the end of a repetition. So once it does that, you can see that j is now 2. So now it's going to check the condition to see if it's still true. Is j still less than or equal to 10? It is, so that means it can keep going into the body of this loop. And once again, it's going to display i times j. This time j is 2 and i is still 1, so we're going to see 2. Great. So now it goes back once again to the inner for loop. It's going to change j to 3, see that it's less than 10, go into the loop, execute that there, and this is how we're going to get through the first multiples uh, all the way, you know, up to 10, ready, up to 9, and the final execution will be when j is 10. Once it sets j equal to 10 it, and gets to 11, it can no longer enter this loop because it says, is 11 less than or equal to 10? No, it is not. At that point, it knows that this loop is done, it's going to exit it and go back to the outer for loop here. So now it goes back, and in this outer for loop, i is still only equal to 1, and it hasn't executed this i++ yet. It finally needs to do this now that it's done executing the inside instructions. So we should see i become 2. Very good, now it's 2. And now we can see, oh, is 2 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. And it's going to go inside to that inner for loop and execute that inner for loop. Now, see that j resets to 1. So that's, that's really interesting um, because it's starting all over again with this for loop. So now when it gets here, it's going to do i times j. This time it's doing 2 times 1. We're going to see 2. So this time i is going to be 2 the whole time and j is going to go from 1 to 10. So we should see 2 times 1 and then we should see 2 times 2 and then we should see 2 times 3 and so on. So this will keep going until it gets to j equals 10 and then it's going to go back up to that outer for loop and i will become 3 and it'll keep going and keep going. So hopefully this gives you an idea for what is actually happening with the computer behind the scenes. If you want, you can try out this visualization yourself and go all the way through every execution of the code, all 342 steps.